Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory. Welcome, New Life Christian Center. Hey, hey, 2012. We made it. God has brought us through another year. Glory to the Father. He loves us. He's brought us into a whole nother year. I stayed up last night for the first time in a couple years, past 12, and I heard all the fireworks, and I heard all other people's stuff, and I was shouting myself mentally, yeah, mentally, that's an mentally. <laughs> Praise God. You know, God has done a great thing this past year, 2011, but he has a lot of great things in store for you. So I would like for you all to come on down here at the New Life Christian Center, 7031 Potomac Drive, Port Richie, Florida, 34668. I would love to minister the word of God to you and to show you how to follow Jesus Christ faithfully, holy and holy. God loves you. We love you. Like I said, we have services every Wednesday night at 7 o'clock and every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. That's clock time, 9 a.m. clock time. I would love to minister the word of God to you. I would love to shake hands with you. Or if you uh, so if you're anywhere in the New Port Richard area or the Port Richard area, even Hudson or Holiday, come on out, even as far as Tampa. Come on now. We would love to minister the word of God to you. We love you and we appreciate you. But as always, let's get ready to get on into the Word of God in 2012. Glory to God. Ain't nothing like starting off with the Word of God in any day. <laughs> but most importantly of all, 2012 and 365 days, just like it is any other year. And God has great things in store for you throughout the course of every day, every moment as well as throughout the course of a whole year. So bow your heads and close your eyes. <clears throat> Father God, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, for your word. We thank you, Father God, for your love and your compassion. You are great and majestic God. There is no other God but you. You have brought us through a whole nother year. And we believe, Father God, as we embark onto into this new year and we take full, go forth in this year, Father God, you will be leading us and guiding us as you direct our paths as we acknowledge you. And we believe, Father God, that every victory that we will encounter, we will know that it's because of your word that has been taught and that has been shown to us. And we have applied it to our lives. That is the reason why we will have the victory. And we covenant with you right now to give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory for every victory that we will encounter. We thank you, Father God. And to that end, Father God, I submit myself to you, spirit, soul, and body. Use my heart, use my mind, use my mouthpiece to minister your un incorruptible word to your people this day. We thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name. And all who agree with that prayer say amen. Amen. I want you all to turn your Bibles to, 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 the, <laughs> to the book of 1 Where is that? Timothy. 2 Timothy. I'm sorry. 2 Timothy. Maybe if I put these on there, it'll help me. Look at me. Look, see my words. No, kind of like, because the way I have my Bible set up, I kind of like do my teaching from my Bible. I take my notes and I have different things that I have written down. Uh, but I mostly keep it all written here in my Bible. So it, uh, it looks like I know what I'm doing. Just, just to give y'all that, for some of y'all other up-and-coming preachers, I would suggest you do that too. Uh, that way, I mean, because once you've studied the message, and I, mean, I, I pray all week long, and I study all week long, just like any man or woman of God should do. I ain't just talking about no preacher. Uh, any man or woman of God, y'all hear me? Or even a child of God, an up-and-coming son, or a son of God. Study your Bible. Pray all week long, and though for those of us who have been called to the ministry and, and the fivefold ministry, you're going to have your notes, what God has told you to do, but always keep yourself open to the Spirit of God. 
Always keep yourself open to the Spirit of God because you never know. God has changed. I've stood up before people and God have changed. I have my notes in front of me and God will be like, I don't want you to teach that right now. But Lord, I just, yeah, I, I want you to teach this. You were supposed to study, but this is what I want you to teach today. And so you have to always be studying God's Word just because you never know what the Spirit of God God will change you at the, at the drop of a hat. And, you know, for those days when he don't change, you'll know. You, you'll know. You walk with God, and you'll know when God is going to. You pretty much, you don't always know, but you'll you sense that God don't want you to teach that. And then God tell you to go there, and you would be like, this is exactly what the people needed. Praise God. Amen. But God, I was stunned, been, I mean, getting into the face of God all this past week, trying to figure out exactly what he wanted me to do. Somebody asked me the other day at, at my job, and they said, uh, so Ivory, uh, what are you gonna be doing for New? Uh, what are you gonna be doing for uh, New Year's Eve? I said, first of all, and and it set into me when it kind of like just dropped in my spirit, and I felt a, a sense of heaviness that I needed to go do not a burden, but a, 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 an unction, a strong unctioning from God that I need to be in prayer, and I need to be in God's face to figure out what He wants me to do for this year. And the guy looked at me like he was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I said, man, because I said, because 2012, how many of you all have ever been here in 2012? Nobody. <laughs> ain't nobody <laughs> raised their hand here. There ain't nothing. I mean, if you raised your hand over there to, via the internet or whatever, so wrong as you, we, we, you yeah. might have went there in spirit and thought about it, but I'm talking about physically have a come up on it and you know all the ins and outs of 2012 going to bring. None of us know, but God knows. Praise God. God knows. And so with that being said, I want us to, 2 Timothy, I want you to turn to chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Watch this. Verse 1. He says this, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead, and, I mean, and quick as the dead, and his appearing, and his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Verse 3, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heed to themselves teachers having itching ears. Verse 4. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Taking the, taking the topic of what I'm going to teach you all and you, you could actually teach this topic all the time. But just for because it's New Year's God has shown me and I've read this verse plenty, verse, plenty, plenty of times. God has shown me through the course of this year, make sure you are able to endure sound doctrine. Sound doctrine. If you look up the word sound, it just means strong. It means solid. Jesus made references to different things uh, uh, through the Gospels, and he said it like this. If a man builds his house up on the sand, the house will fall. If a man builds his house up on a rock, the house will stand. How do you know the house gonna fall if it's built up on sand, or if the house built up on a rock is gonna stand? Um, the house built up on sand is gonna fall, or if the house built up on a rock is gonna stand? He made an effort. He said that there was a great storm. He was talking about a great storm. He said the storm came. It beat on both the houses. But the house that was built up on sand, it fell. The house that was built up on the rock, it stood. So what's the sand and the rock? He's talking about the foundation. So what is the foundation of the gospel of Jesus Christ? His teachings. The word of God itself is the foundation. It's the foundation. 
Notice what he said right here. He gives you, he said, I charge thee, in verse 1, I charge thee, therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Bible said this word judge, it means that God is going to judge us who say we believe in him, as well as the ones who just didn't want to have nothing to do with God. God going to judge both of us. Y'all see that? Y'all see that? Look what he says. That's why he's, then he comes right at to preachers. As well as you all who have been given the ministry of reconciliation, which every born again believer has been given the work of bringing people back to God. So it could be for anybody who preaches, anybody, don't just pastors, prophets, evangelists, teachers, and uh, 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 apostles. He ain't just talking about the fivefold ministry. He talking about all y'all who just do Bible school or Bible study teachers. All of you all who say you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. You did Romans 10, 9 and 10. I believe in my heart. I confess my He's talking about you. What did he say do? Preach the word. Be instant in season. That means on point, right time. When the Spirit of God is telling you to minister the word of God to somebody, you better be on point. And the only way you can be on point in this is if you have a constant study habit and and and, and sitting down before God's word. And you, you study in the Bible on a consistent basis. You ain't going to wake up every day, oh, I got a message. I got a message. I got a message. No, you'll be going through about your every day. Everyday work, and you be on a job, whatever kind of job, construction, food service, or whether you a big businessman in a big office building, you in you in Trump Enterprises, and you got your own cubicle, and you sitting up there doing playing with Donald Trump's numbers or, or whatever, and you doing what feeding some kind of information to a computer, and all of a sudden some girl or some guy come to your cubicle, and you say, and all of a sudden the Spirit of God says, "Tell them I love them. Tell them about Jesus Christ." Be instant in season. But then he says do what? And out of season. <laughs> that means even when people don't want to hear it. Even when people don't want to hear it. But I'm afraid I'm going to lose them as my friend. They if they die, they're going to hell. And if you're going to be in glory, you're still going to lose them as a friend. That friendship going to be severed. Don't look at the friendship as the person just being around you. Friendship is knowing that the person is with you even when they ain't around you. My wife is my friend. She's my friend. She go to work and I go to my job and it's a good 30 miles from each other. Guess what? I still think about my wife. I think about the great times I can have with my wife, and I think about the wonderful times I'm going to have with my wife, and I know that she has my back. I can trust her. She's 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 uplifting me in prayer. I'm uplifting her in prayer, and so on and so forth, and all other good stuff. That friendship. She talking about me behind my back. No good for nothing. Some some summer summer and some summer. That ain't my friend. Uh oh, there we go. I don't know. I think I just lost some of y'all. Look what it says. Reprove. Rebuke. Exhort. Reprove. Just in case if you don't know what reprove means, it means to correct. You see people erring in some of the things that they're doing. They say they believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Reprove them. Come to, hey brother, hey sister. Uh, I, I don't, I don't want to hurt your feelings or nothing, but that, that's not God, man. But you got to be bold. You got to be walking in it yourself. I mean, you're going to make mistakes too. Don't get me wrong. No, because people want to look at that stuff. You're going to make mistakes anyway, but don't look at that. You know, hey, sister, that's that's not God. No, no, let, let me help you show you the correct way. Let me show you. Well, watch this. He says what? Look what he said. Rebuke. Now, I ain't talking about going up rebu re re rebuke repeat. When you rebuke people, it don't mean you just getting folk faith. Now, you wrong. You're going to hell because I ain't talking about all that. It just it ain't talking about all that. But if you see people erring and, 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 and certain things of God, I, I know that's wrong. You you say you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you sleeping with that girl, that's not God, man. That's wrong because it ain't in the Bible. 
Well, I love her. Yeah, you're right. I don't understand you do love her. Your emotions that got all into it. But the Bible say don't do it. So technically, you might love her with your emotions, but you hate them with your actions. Because the Bible say flee fornication and you having sex with her. And you trying to connect it to love. The love of God say don't do it. <laughs> Rebuke. Then he said exhort, which means encourage. You see people, encourage them. Man, come on, man. You can obey God. It, it ain't as hard as you think it is. Once you make the decision, it ain't as hard as you think it is. Just do it, man. Come on. You can do it. No, man. You can do it. God shall supply all your needs. I'm telling you, if you cook over God, God shall supply all your needs. Encourage people. People need that. Watch this. With all long-suffering, 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 Long suffering, long patience. <laughs> long patience. They don't get it today, help them get it tomorrow. They don't get it tomorrow, help them get it the next day. They don't get it that day, help them get it that day. How much long suffering did God have to God with God with me? He had to go when I first got born again at 16. And by the time I was 18, I was back out in the streets acting stupid. Trying to be gangster. Okay? From 18 years old, I did not recommit my life back to Jesus Christ until I was 26. <coughs> so you're talking about <coughs> eight years. Eight years of my life. From 16 to 18, 18 back out in the streets. From 18 to 26, that's eight years of my life. I cast it off to try to be, be a gangster and, 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 and act crazy. And in the midst of all that, I got married, had kids, and we had some other different things, but I was still not sold out to God. Eight years, people, I wasted all that time. But now, here it is a whole lot of years later, I'm telling you, God was long-suffering with me. And now God is telling you, there's going to be some people you need to be in long-suffering with. You might need to be in long-suffering with yourself. Why didn't I get it today? Why didn't I get this today? That's why he says, and doctrine. The word doctrine just basically means teaching. Teaching. Bible says in the book of Luke that Jesus went into all their synagogues teaching, teaching the gospel, 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 teaching the gospel. I did a I did a message not too long ago, and I and I did a message not too long ago, and it was talking about there is more. You see the word teaching more in the Bible than you see any other word. The word teaching, taught, or teach, or any of those formalities of those, that, that word, you see that word more than you see the word preach. Oh, he a preacher. True, he is a preacher. God, God, the Bible talks about preachers, about preaching. Somebody need to proclaim the gospel. But I submit to you, once you get born again, you hear me out there? You need somebody to teach you. You need to sit down. Holy Ghost class one-on-one. -on -one. You need to sit down. No, you know, go in this classroom. Holiness, room 102. Holy Ghost class room 101. Walking by faith, not by sight. That's in classroom 402. Abraham is teaching that class. Go over there and teach that class. Go, go sit down. God got men and women today on TV as well as in your circular area on a job somewhere and they go and they, 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 you need to be getting this stuff out. Why? Look at verse 4 and verse 3. For the time will come when they will not endure Endure sound doctrine. And I see people like that now. 
when you start that born that these folks are born again now. And if you start trying to tell them, man, no, you wrong. No, that's not God. Come on, go to church. Go, no, come on, let, let, let's go to this church. I know some people, they go to the churches right now. And they sit up in the church and they don't understand nothing the preacher talking about. They don't understand nothing the preacher talking about. They don't understand nothing the preacher talking about. They're hooping and hollering. And they, oh, that preacher, oh, he shows in the spirit. He fell. What did he, what did he teach you? What did you learn today? God. Really? That's so you in church. They don't say, what did he teach you last week? We talked about God. <laughs> what did the teacher on something? Did it benefit you? Did you get something out of it to where you can apply it to your life? Well, you know, they, they taught. They, 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 they preached on the Bible. Man, why are you still in that church? <clears throat> why are you still in that church? You ain't got nothing that's going to help you change your life. Did it help you change your financial situation? Did it help you change your relationship with your family? Did it help you change your relationship with your wife or your husband? Did it help you change your relationship with God? Did it help you or did it help you establish? What did the man or the woman teach on? They will not be able to endure strong, sound doctrine. Now, uh, you, so, you ain't supposed to be so adamant with certain teachings to where you don't even allow God to say, no, nah, I need you to go in this direction. Now, God is not going to go against another part of his word. He's not going to go against no part of his word. But God may say, okay, I need you to sit that aspect down for a second. Put that on the back burner. We're going to come back to it because this person ain't ready for that yet. Now, some people, we need, we, I personally believe we need more hell, fire, and brimstone preachers. I, I, me. Somebody, that's how I got into the kingdom. Y you saved? And I saw that lady. I said, no. You know you're going to hell if you don't get saved. Uh... I am. You better get up here and get saved. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> and I ran up there. I believe my heart. I confess in my mouth that Jesus Christ loves. Now, we need those preachers. We need those. We need those. Don't, please hear me. But some people, they need to be just flat foot kicked in the rear end. What's wrong with you, man? We need drill instructors. Y'all, those you who've been in the military, you know, them drill instructors. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Get it right, man. I remember one time on the firing range when I was in South Carolina with uh, in, in, in the Marine Corps, and I I was I was real good at shooting my gun. I was I was getting really really good, and I was like four points away from being an expert, but because I just thought I was just all the the stuff and just thought all all that, and because I was able to shoot them guns, and all of a sudden I didn't know my drill instructor was watching me. And I was, what, we were, what, five, six hundred, five hundred yards away. And, you know, I had my rifle, and I was shooting. Pow! Pow! And I had ten shots on one target. I got nine shots right in the black. One shot was like, eek, just an inch. I uh, just like a half of a centimeter outside the black. Nine out of ten. I was, when I got my little paper and I saw my score, and I said, oh, yeah, I did pretty good. My judge says, what the blank of the blank, you're smiling at. You got nine shots all in the middle, and then you're going to let the one just go on out there, just, just, just all over the place. Man, I was like, oh, man, I, I, here I am. I'm thinking I did a doggone good job. Guess what? The Holy Ghost is doing the same <laughs> thing with some of us who know better. He doing the same thing. Ah, right, what's wrong with you? Now, you know, some people need that, but some people need this. Come on, baby. Let me give you some milk. You can't take a one-year-old and expect them to get a perfect 10. <laughs> no. you. Why you cuss? Well, I've only been born again for two days. L let me help you. Let me show you. They need to be exhorted. They need to be encouraged. Mm -hmm. Now, you can put that filthy language away. You follow that? They won't be able to, able to endure sound doctrine. Why? Because... They will heed to themselves, teachers having itching ears. Enduring sound doctrine in 2012 because you're going to always have opportunity. Somebody going to come up and they're going to try to come against the scriptures that you've been studying. 
Just like y'all here in the room right now, y'all hearing this message. Guess what? When you go out there in public, when you go out there in public, all y'all who, who go to church, you're hearing via the web right now, and you, guess what? You're going to go out there, and you're going to run up against somebody, and somebody's going to be like, uh, uh, where did it say this in the Bible? Da, 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 da. And they're going to ask you all them different kind of questions, and you're going to be like, you're going to get stunned, shocked for a brief second, maybe. And, and, and all of a sudden, you're going to go to searching because you didn't take the time to remember what you was taught. And they're going to be challenging you. Satan got him out there because he don't remember. He don't care. And then that person, because you failed them, they're going to go and they're going to submit themselves to somebody. Have They're going to hear, listen to somebody to tickle their ear. Tell them what they want to hear. Oh, no. You, no. You can continue. No. You, you pregnant, but you still can smoke cigarettes. Three or four cigarettes a day, it ain't going to hurt the baby. I'll slap you, doctor. What's wrong with y'all? Really? No, ain't no wrong with having a glass of wine. She an alcoholic, and you going to tell her she can have a glass of wine for real, dude? She done destroyed a whole family, her family, and yet some of y'all functioning drunks. You get up and you get around people with the alcohol all on your breath, and you're going to try to tell me that you're just a casual drinker? Really? They're going to heap to themselves having itching ears. Why? Look what verse 4 says. And they shall turn away <laughs> their ears from the truth. What's the truth? We find out on our Wednesday night services. What do we find out the truth is? God's word. They're going to turn from God's word. It didn't say that they're going to turn from a fact. He said they're going to turn from the truth. They're going to turn. They're going to they believe us. And they're going to turn from God's word to what? Fables. A lie. Oh no, you can continue to have sex outside of marriage as long as you just stay faithful to that one person you're with. The Bible said flee fornication. And you're going to try to tell me that ain't nothing wrong with having sex outside of marriage? Well, it's the, it's the, it's to the each and individual ones. And, and it's, the, it's what people do with they now, now, people have a right to make their own decisions. You are right. People do have a right to make their own decisions. I totally, 100% agree with you. But if you make a decision outside of God's word, you're going to suffer the consequences. I'm teaching my, teaching my son and my, uh, my, son, my son, the other day, and my son, who we was out and about, and he, he just fine. He'll be six years old here in a few days. And I was just trying to tell, teach, she gave him a new word. It's called consequences. There are consequences for good actions, and there are consequences for bad actions. Consequences for good actions is like the, the, the action that I choose to be faithful to my wife. What's the consequence for that? No AIDS. You hear me? What's the consequence for uh, me being faithful to my wife? No syphilis. No gonorrhea. No kind of HIV to any degree coming into, into that through sex anyway. <laughs> ain't, 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 no, ain't, no, ain't no divorce court. Ain't no, ain't no extracurricular baby mama and baby daddy drama. Those are the consequences for me being faithful to my wife. My wife is right here, just in case y'all don't see her right here. Okay? She right here. So I'll be faithful to my wife. That's the consequence. What's the consequence if I choose to be unfaithful to my wife? AIDS could come into the picture. Baby mama drama. Baby daddy drama. And all this other kind of stuff. And then possibly divorce court. I don't need all that. That's part of the curse. I don't need all that. I don't need all that. Y'all follow me? Y'all follow me? Okay, watch this. I will not turn unto a lie. I will not turn unto a lie. I will not turn into a lie. Now I'm going to add the verse in here. I waited to this moment to add the verse in to get to this point. Verse 5. But watch thou in all things. Endure afflictions, all them struggles that you're going to go through, endure it. Do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. When I stand before Jesus Christ, I want him to say, well done. I don't need no, come here. <laughs> come here. Y'all Y'all know y'all kids, when you, when you see them finna do something wrong, you. Come here. Didn't 
tell you, then I'll do this with my son in a minute. What's wrong with you? Hey, my little nephew, like, why don't you pay attention? <laughs> I'm going to take a page out of my, my sister's book. Stay focused. Stay focused. <laughs> so y'all need to catch that, man. You need to catch that. I want you to turn your Bible over. You just uh, just go one page over. I want you to go to Titus chapter 1. Titus chapter 1. Titus chapter 1. Watch this. It says this. Verse 9. Hold fast the faithful word as, as he hath been taught, that he may be able to, he may, he may able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. If you stay with sound doctrine, you stay with it, whether it be a day, a week, or a month, the person that you might have been trying to win and all these other folk that's around them, they'll see that you still stand steadfast and they'll see all the other stuff turn into a lie. But it takes, oh man, and here's something that uh, us Christians, we lack it. We lack fighting ability. I didn't say go punch somebody in the throat. You know, I'm talking about that. I'm coming. I'm coming for you. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm still coming. I'm coming. We, we, we miss that. We, we're lacking that in the body of Christ. It's almost like the moment you trying to talk somebody about Lord Jesus Christ and somebody else come up around them and, and, and they trick them. We just say, well, I guess it wasn't meant for me to talk to that person about Jesus. And then they walk on, and they don't, they don't even talk to that person no more, and they just let that person fall on over into Satan's hands. Man, that's happened to me so many times, and all of a sudden, I, I say, okay, they got me this round. Round two. <laughs> okay, they got me this time. Round three. And it could be days and weeks and months at a time. And all of a sudden, people see you, they see you stand steadfast. And I hear people say it to me all the time. How is it that you stay so up all the time? Watch this. Bring it to my prayer time. Lord Jesus, I need you. I need you. I'm constantly in God's word. And that's how I'm able to stay up. That's how I'm able to stay encouraged. That's how I'm able to stay lifted up. Because I'm constantly in God's word. I'm staying with what? Sound doctrine. Watch this. Verse 10. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision. Wow. He come right out. Now, this is uh, uh, Paul writing to Titus. And then Paul says this. Think about it. There, at that time, there were many Jews who say that they believed in God. And they lie to folk. Ain't that what y'all just read them? Watch them. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision. So what do you think is referring to to us in this time? There are a lot of people, talking to you preachers out there, Lying to folk. You say you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm coming. Say you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And you lying to people, man. Hey, oh, ain't nothing wrong. God, no, God blesses all those. No, the Bible says that the sun shines on the just and the unjust. Yeah, you're right, it does. But it doesn't mean that you can go into sin and do what you want to do. Come on, people. See how prevalent this is? Because see, 2012, we're going to go through it. Think about it. How fast 2011 just went on, just shot on by. 2012 going to be just shot on through as well. And we're going to look back over 2012, and we won't be able to gain anything in Christ. We won't win to be the one, not one person to the Lord. <clears throat> We won't, be to, we won't be to establish our own selves in holiness and in righteousness, in faith. We won't be to do nothing 
because we probably heaped ourselves itching ears. Look what Paul says in verse 11 about these people who go around lying to folk about, you know, watering down the word of God. Whose mouths, what? Must be stopped. They must be stopped. They must be stopped. Why? Because what are they doing? Subverting whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy liquor sake or filthy money. They doing, they teaching people this stuff just to separate you from your pocketbook. Didn't we say this already? Before we, before we say this already, we said, if you don't plan your future, somebody else will. Somebody is sitting up in Walmart right now. And hey, Walmart, y'all better send me my check. New Light Christian Center, 7031 Potomac Drive. Because I'm telling you, somebody sitting up in Walmart right now trying to figure out how to way to get the money out your pocket. See if we can roll back this price so we can get gain an extra 10 cents. Why? Because they looking, they trying to establish things themselves. And here I am telling you, God is not happy with us coming off of his word. He's not happy, people. He's not happy with that. But he wants you, he wants you to be aware of it. He says, these people must be stopped. They are tricking whole households. They're going in and they're tricking family members. I mean, their husband. Oh, you can get this better over here with this woman. You can just divorce this one and then get you another one. Fool. Oh, yeah. oh ain't nothing wrong with you uh, doing this to your daughter. You a fool. Well, she grown now. She on her own. Man, you or she might be grown and on her own, but you still have a responsibility as a father to pray for your child. And if she calls you, you give her godly advice. The word of God <laughs> advice. A word, not advice, but you give the word of God truth. Thank you, Lord, Holy Spirit, for correcting that word. The word of God truth. You don't give her just something off the top of your head of what Pookie and them and your grandmama and them taught you when you was growing up. You give her the word of God. Your son needs you, that, her mama. You tell your son, encourage him. Daddy, you encourage your son. You can do this, man. What, you going to quit? You're not going to quit. I ain't going to let you quit. I'm not going to let you quit. You give him the word of God. Watch this. Hold on. Here we go. Turn your Bibles to, girl, you right there in Titus already. I want you to turn to Titus chapter 2. Because you're already in chapter 1. You're going to go to chapter 2. Now, you ought to do this on your own. Here's your homework assignment. <laughs> Titus chapter 2. It teaches us how to get these things done. It teaches us how to get these things done. It says, watch this. Verse, chapter 2, verse 1. But, Speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. Here's the word sound doctrine now. It says speak the things that are strong teachings. Something that's built on the rock, not on sand. Solid. Watch this, what it says. That the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, in patience. What are you supposed to do? The aged men do what? The older men. Like me, I'm an older man now. <laughs> I'm not an old man, but I am an older man now. I'm supposed to teach these, I'm supposed to do what? I'm supposed to be sober, mind alert. You can't, you can't drink one wine, one glass of wine and still be sober. That's a lie. It's an oxymoron. <laughs> you can't drink one beer and still be sober. I don't care what you say. I don't care what the legal limit says. Tell me no legal limit. Once you drink one drink of it, you are you are intoxicated. That's why they say blood alcohol levels. See, y'all don't want to go with that. Grave, temperate, I mean self-control, sound in faith, 
This word faith is a combination of the two faiths that we know about. Totally reliance upon God, as well as in calling those things that be not as though they were. Sound in faith. In charity. The word charity means love. And how? In patience. <laughs> They're long-suffering again. Watch this. The aged women likewise that they be in behavior as becometh holiness. Wow. Becometh holiness. That becometh holiness. What is he referring to right here? It's talking about all the other things that he's talking about the men. Same stuff. Not false accusers. Not given to much wine. Now we know, as well as I do, that uh, we shouldn't be drinking at all. at all. Now if you want to go drink, you can go drink. But please hear me. A lot of us don't know how to drink a glass of wine or anything and keep it a glass of wine. I don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, you follow me? Watch this. To love their husbands, to love, to love their husbands, to love their no, 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 not, not give too much wine. Teachers of good things. Look what it says. This is why I know this. A lot of people just want to take off in verse four and say that it's still talking about the woman. Wrong. It's not. What do you think that word they is talking about now? What did it start off? Thank you. The woman said over here. It said the both of them. The aged men and the aged women. That they. That they. May teach the young women to be sober. They. Mama and daddy. Teaching the child. To be sober. Mama and daddy teaching a child to be sober, to be alert, to be attentive. I personally believe that's where all this ADHD, that's where all that stuff came out of. Attention to deficit disorder. Yeah, that's because you ain't teaching that child to pay attention. Pay attention, boy. You, what are you doing in school? Well, you know, my friend, no, no. What did I tell you to do at school? Pay attention to your teachers just like you paying attention to me. Now, if they turn their eyeballs, man, my daddy would have slapped me. Boy, look at me when I'm talking to you. We ain't teaching our kids to pay attention. Oh, Lord Jesus, I right, here you go. You think you're a doctor now, and you're going to come up with some kind of medical term? No, the Bible tells me my children better pay attention to me. Look at me. Look at me when I'm talking to you. What's wrong with you? You ain't, you ain't going down the road. I'm going to teach them to pay attention, <laughs> to be alert, <laughs> to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children. Hold on. How can you teach your child to love their husband? Or how do you teach your son to love his wife? You, what are you doing? You are calling your wife blankety blank B and blankety blank this and all this crap and stuff and da 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 da. What do you think that boy gonna learn? He gonna grow up and he gonna say, oh, itch, H, forget you, mother. And could you taught him? Well, I'm grown. I can do that. No, fool. Come on, man. It says what? To what? To love their husbands and to love their children. How do you teach your children to love their children? By you loving them. Obeying God. Obeying God. That's how you teach them. They see you. My mentor told me all the time, more is caught than taught. You can sit up and flap your gums all you want. They watching your actions. They watching your actions. They see what you say. Then they looking at your actions. Both of them are supposed to be compatible people. Both of them. Both of them. Watch this. Verse 5. To be discreet, chase, keepers at home. Husbands, get off. You lazy joker, man. Get up and go cut the grass. Get up, sweep the floor sometime. 
Now I admit it, I get put out the kitchen quite often, but I know how to wash dishes. Made sure, my mama made sure I knew how to wash dishes. I mean, I know how to wash dishes the way they want me to wash dishes, but I know how to wash dishes. At the end of the day, the dish is going to be clean when I wash dishes. No matter if you throw all the dishes in the sink at one time or not, they're going to be clean. The end result is that they clean. Out of dish, is the, is the four clean? Yes. And you can eat off of it, no matter how it got there. <laughs> Mess with my mama. Put all them dishes in one sink now. <laughs> Watch this. They mess with me like that on the job. I put all this in one sink. Just wash them. Just wash them. Is the dish clean? Do you still feel grease on it? Do you see anything on it? No. It's clean then. Do you see? Do you do you think? I got sanitized on it. It's been sanitized. It's clean. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Watch this. It said to be chased. To be discreet. Chase keepers at home. Good. Obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Be not blasphemed. Notice, I want to go back to that word discreet. Some of us men and women, we don't know how to be discreet. We don't know how to be discreet with our mouths. We don't know how to be discreet with our actions. With our clothes, pants all the way down here, and your drawers showing, and you think you're being discreet? Really? Girl, clothes, you wear hoochie mama stuff. And the, you know them clothes too tight for you. But it's just, you know, I'm supposed to express myself. So you're going to show all your goodies and all of a sudden you end up pregnant or you end up raped or something and you're going to say, well, I understand. Please hear me. I understand. It's still the other person's responsibility to not do nothing. But why are you giving them, why are you giving Satan an advantage? Why are you giving them room? Why are you giving them room? Don't give them any room. Well, I don't know why I can't find me a guy, or I can't find me a dude, uh, uh, I can't find me one, a man, or find me a woman that loves me for me. Look what you're showing them. Because once they get from you what that you showing them, they don't want nothing else. They're not looking, not looking at the mind. They're not looking at your emotions. They're looking at, oh, yeah, give me some nooky, nooky, nooky now. And so when they get it, they don't want nothing else from you no more. And they even rapping about it in the songs. I get one every day. I get one every day. I get one all the time. A blankety blank itch is a blankety blank itch. I get another one every day. If this one ain't going with me, then I just go with that one. I don't know why nobody want me for me. You ain't discreet. I don't know why. And then we go through all that and we sit, we, we sit up and make an excuse. You just make an excuse. Watch this. Last verse. Verse 6. Young men likewise exhort to be sober minded. Verse 7. In all things showing thyself a partner, I mean a pattern of good works. How? In doctrine. In uncorruptness Gravity, sincerity, sound speech that cannot be condemned that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed having no evil thing to say of you. You get so put to the point to where you are sound in God's word. You're sound in doctrine. You're sound in it. To where people, when they look at you, and they won't have nothing evil to say about you. And if they do say something evil about you, they lied on you. Now some of y'all preachers know what I'm talking about. Y'all been out there doing the work of God. I'm telling you, keep doing the work of God. You keep doing the work of God. You keep doing the work of God. You keep doing it. You keep obeying God's word. You keep living a righteous lifestyle. You keep walking by faith. And when judges politicians or whoever show up and they try to make you look bad mm. your record books tight you tight you won't be no baby mama drama mm. and it all be a lie and you won't end up in divorce court and then you'll come out shining be just like the Hebrew boys they went into the fiery furnace but you'll come out with no smoke on you cause you obey God 
Glory to God. Stay in sound doctrine. Stay in it. Stay in it. I love you. God bless you. Happy New Year. Come on out here to New Life Christian Center, 7031 Potomac Drive, Port Richard, Florida, 34668. Come on out here so that we can show you how to follow Jesus Christ faithfully, holy, and holy. See you next time.